What is normalizing? What is keeping track of your range? What is paying the price? What is normalizing? Let's do a thought experiment. So let's say we're walking through a dimension, a two-dimensional dimension. We can go up, we can go down, we can go left, and we can go right. And this dimension extends to infinity in every single direction. So basically, we're walking through an infinite space. And because we're traveling through infinity, we are simultaneously everywhere, and we are nowhere. We exist, and we don't exist. We don't have a name. We don't have an identity. So what are we doing walking around in infinity? Well, we're trying to find a point, any point. And at that any point, there's going to be a number. And that number describes that point. And we can use that number to describe us. We can use that number as our name. So you could say that we're not trying to find any point. We're trying to find any number. So which number are we trying to find? Well, if our dimension extends to infinity in every single direction, this means that we have an infinite amount of numbers to choose from. So how do we go about deciding on which number to choose? If every number is an option, then no number is any more unique or more special than any other number. The number 2 billion may as well be the exact same number as negative 17. But there is a lifeline, guys. There's a guide. There's a Virgil. So this dude Virgil comes up to us and he says, you want to draw graphics on a canvas, on a monitor in your real world. But on a canvas, on your monitor in the real world, you guys don't extend it to infinity. What you need are rules. What you need are boundaries to your dimension. And so this is what normalizing is. We're setting constraints on the numbers or the valid numbers in a dimension so we can wrap our heads around actually choosing a number. And since fragment shader programming has so much to do with choosing numbers, we need to find some way to constrain them. Because if we don't, we're lost in a sea of an infinite amount of numbers doing random things, and that doesn't help us. Now, in the last video, if you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description. We left off with a bit of code, code that kind of looked like this. And that code introduced two new variables to us, a uniform or a constant called U-resolution and a global called gl frag chord. U-resolution was the resolution of our canvas, and the frag chord was the position, the X, Y, and Z position of the pixel on our canvas, but relative to the monitor's resolution. And so we left off with a question. Why are we dividing the position of our pixel relative to our monitor's resolution by the resolution of our canvas? Let's go back to the thought experiment. So let's say we're transported. And we're transported from the infinite dimension to a dimension with some actual constraints, with some actual boundaries. And the boundaries of that new dimension are 1920 by 1080. And in this new dimension, we actually have a name. And our name is 68503, somewhere around here. And so we're walking in this dimension when we find another dimension. We can see into that dimension. And in that dimension, they're having a good time. There's partying, there's music, there's dancing, there's food. And we want to get into that dimension. And so we start towards them, but their doorman stops us and he says, what do you think you're doing? And we say, well, what does it look like we're doing? We want to get in. He says, you can't just walk in here. You got to pay the price. So we ask him, well, what's the price? And he asks us, well, what's your name? And we say 68503. Now he looks at us and he says, in there they have no idea what that name means. In there, they go from 0 to 1. So I don't care where you're coming from. In there, it's 0 to 1. So we pay the entry price and we change our name. And we change our name to 0 0.03. 0.4657. The doorman looks at our new name and he says, Welcome aboard, and he lets us in. Now, what just happened? In the dimension we were coming from, numbers ranged from 1920 by 1080. In the dimension we were going to, numbers ranged from 1 by 1. And so their dimension literally has no idea what the number 68 or 503 means. It's well outside their range. It's a way to pay a price in order to enter their space. Now why the numbers 0 0.0354 and 0 0.4657? What do those two numbers mean? This brings us to the idea of number 
versus value or absolute versus relative when we changed our name we didn't actually change our value we just changed superficially it's just the name what is 0 0.0354 well that's 3.54 percent of 1920 and 0 0.4657 is 46.57% of 1080. Sometimes the absolute and the relative match. The number and the value are the same number. So a case of that would be if I won 90 out of 100 games, I won 90% of those games. Often though the absolute and the relative don't match. The number and the value are different. In our original dimension, our name was 68503. Our value at that time though was 3.54 percent and 46.57 percent. When we wanted to enter a new dimension we had to change our name here but we didn't change our actual value here. So we change our name but we keep our value. In fragment shader program we deal with a lot of numbers choosing numbers. So theoretically, every number is available to us, but that doesn't mean that every number is a valid number. 68 is not a valid number in this subspace or this dimension. 503 is definitely not a valid number in this subspace or dimension. We have to keep track of our range, keep track of range, and if you want to go partying in a different dimension, we got to pay the price to get into that dimension. Now, what does paying the price look like? How do we do that? What does it look like visually? What does it look like mathematically? I'll answer that one in the next video. I'm going to stop it here because this video is getting long, it's getting wordy, and I'll continue in part two. But what do we cover in this video? Well, we have a vague notion of what normalizing is, something about regions and space and number ranges and paying the price to enter someone else's space. But how does it work exactly? In the next video, we're going to go through two examples, and I'm going to give you two ways to kind of conceptualize or think about the process of normalizing. So as always, if you find value in any of this, like, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up, vote up, whichever platform you're watching this on, and I will see you guys in the next one.